Uh, it's just like the regular. steps you want to do is understand the core concept you want to secure something you want to make sure that you understand what you're securing so go right into it what is computer networking computer network is a set of computer and nodes that can communicate if you're a person my nodes is usually something that sits on the edge of the network which is like routers printers or switches which we'll cover in just a moment and why computer networking why should we even bother the computer by itself can provide can be powerful, but providing a method for computer to communicate with other computer to nodes, it can improve efficiency, right? You, you can send emails, you can uh, download stuff online versus having to go over to somebody, give them a physical paper of a copy, uh, copy of a paper. And right, so how, how can we have computers communicate? The answer is it happens via a computer network. Computers need a method for sending data, like either wired or wireless, some, me some method to deliver a message either switchers, routers, we'll cover in a second, and a protocol, a set of rules that communicate. Think of me talking right now, my method of sending the data, quote unquote, is my voice. The method of delivering it is the sound wave that you receive. And the protocol is the English language that we all understand here. And you can think about, you think about securing it, think about somebody listening in or different ways somebody can hear my voice. How can we potentially secure this sort of communication? Maybe will do some sort of language I make up with somebody else, think of encryption. So you can just let your mind wander and, and think about these different security concepts, which we'll cover as well. And the basic architecture of a network, which is called the OSI model, which has seven layers. And the computer, does, the network doesn't work precisely like that, but gives you like an overall big picture of essentially the different functions of a network. And when you send data, it's gonna start at layer seven, go down all the way to level one. And when you receive the data, you're gonna start at level one, go away to level seven, and we'll go over all the levels in just a moment. And a good acronym to remember is all people seem to need data processing. So we start with the A, which is layer seven, which is application layer, or some people know it's application program interface or API. When you think of an application layer, you don't think of the actual app, but something that makes the app capable of communicating with other computers. Think about your calculator, you probably can't communicate with other computers. I mean, at least they shouldn't, at least hope not. But if you think about, let's say uh, a Word document, now they allow you to share a document that you can work live with somebody else that will have an API that will allow you to communicate. So whatever makes your application network aware, that's application level. And layer six, which is the P, which is presentation layer. It's in charge of data conversion, which how the data looks like compression, encryption, decryption, or translation languages and so forth. And layer five, which is the session layer, which manages connection. For example, when you log into CUNY first, you're gonna establish a connection with a server and that is done via the session layer. And you can see those three steps here, but we'll, go, we'll touch that on that later. And then layer four, which is the transport layer. When you send a, for example, a one gigabyte file, if you, if it, if you take up the entire time, if you send one, just one file in one shot, has a few uh, drawbacks. One of them is if there's an error, you have to resend the entire file. Secondly, if you send a one gigabyte file, it's going to hold up the entire network while the one gigabyte file is transported. Everybody else is going to have to wait, and you're not going to do anything else. The trans transfer layer does is it divides it into smaller chunks. 
either it's called segments if you're using a TCP protocol and or datagrams if you're using a UDP, pro, UDP pro, protocol. And the segments can have many header fields and one of which is a frequency number, which will allow the receiving system to reconstruct the data in the proper manner. And which, which also the system will know if data is missing as well. Layer three, which is the network layer, which we're probably a bit more familiar with, or with something called a logical layer. It puts the data, it takes the segments or the datagrams we had earlier, and it puts it into a packet. The packet will have three parts. It will have the data, have the source IP address, which means your own IP address, and the solution IP address. The IP address is a logical way of addressing your computer, just like your home has an address, so it may also come to you. Uh, your system will also have an IP address. Then we'll be moving down one layer, which is the layer two, which is the data link layer. So we have a packet with the, the frequency number, we have the data with the packet header. So the packet gets put into a frame, you'll have, and the frame will have a frame header on top of that, which uses the MAC address. So you take the packet, to review quickly, layer four, you divide the data into small segments or chunks, and then you put it into a packet. And you add the IP address and the destination IP address. And then you take that packet and you put it into a frame, which has the frame header, which has the MAC address, which is the MAC address is what is in, burnt into your network interface card, which is unique to your system. And layer one, which is a physical layer, which we all know is the hardware. So you have the cable, and at this point, it's just bits, zeros and ones. So, you know, we're in a base card, it's on layer one as well. And some of the networking terms to be familiar with is the server. The server is something that a computer that processes your requests. So, when you connect to the CUNY server, the process your request for your CUNY first account. And DNS, which is when you go to google.com, how does how did your browser know which server to contact? And that is via the domain name system or DNS. It takes the domain name and it resolves it into an IP address. And then at that point, your computer knows which other computer or server to contact. And then other term is the protocol. You can hear a lot. It's a set of rules and formatting and processing data. Just like you speaking out the English language, it has a set of rules that you guys understand. And that's why we have a method of communication. Somebody doesn't speak English, and not gonna be able to understand me. Somebody speaks a different language, I'm not gonna be able to understand them. And then the you have the term protocol suite, which is a set of Smaller network protocols working together. So you have multiple protocols working together in the defined method. And then you have ISP, which is the internet service provider. And I'll pass it off to Brian. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over the networking types. It's where you talk a lot about the concepts. So how does this apply to the real world and how does it apply architecture-wise? So if you just wanna remember like LAN, MAN, WAN, you know, LAN is a smaller guy, MAN is the one in the middle. And what when is like the head honcho if you want to think about it like that. So let's start, let's first start off with LAN. That's known as a local area network. It can be this can be something like a small building or your home. And these devices are usually connected by a switch or a stack of switches. And I'll actually show you a picture later on how switches look. And these are usually connected by your Ethernet cable that you use at home or maybe by Wi-Fi. And then for these speeds, they're relatively fast because it's just a small area and data doesn't need to travel that much. So here we have the Ethernet cable. This is the most common method for plugging into LANs. And then you connect that over here to the switch. And it can be a big diagram here, but it could be small in your home, like with your Wi-Fi router, your laptop, and maybe just a phone. It really depends, but it's always limited to a small geographical area. And then you have here your coaxial cable. This is another type of connection medium that you plug into your uh, modem, or if your router is both a two in one, like router and modem, in order to get connected to the internet. Now we have MAN. This is um, a larger area type network, not as big as WAN, but MAN is going to refer to your cities. And this is mostly going to be your internet service provider, ISP, that we talked about. This is going to be a larger area composing of multiple LANs linking them together. And this communication medium are usually fiber optic cables, and these are usually like deep in the ground. They're really stuck together. And then here in the diagram, we'll see that the man connects the hospital, the college, and the factory school, just like how we have over here. And now you can see the connection mediums. And now we have WAN. This is not as a wide area network. And the internet is just an example of that WAN. So this actually extends globally without ties to a singular 
physical location because it's just so big. There's multiple operations running it. So this actually claims connects lands and lands together. And this is vital for international business and just everyday use case. It's connecting everyone together. I mean, think about the internet. We use it literally like every day. And we want to be able to communicate with someone, say, in like Canada or like from across the globe without this. And then these connection mediums are going to be way stronger. And then they're going to be way bigger in size. So even um, satellite links are going to be used. And then fiber and copper cables, which are usually huge stored deep underground as well. And then, then now here I have a little diagram of how like the WAN works. So basically this is like, if you want to think of it, this is the WAN and then here are multiple servers. They're all connecting. And then these are the con connection mediums that are helping the WAN. You see sometimes even satellites in space are used and your cellular towers are examples of connection mediums. So now let's talk about different network devices. So the first one we're going to start off is just playing a simple router. I have a picture right here, and it even displays uh, the device connected to the land. So what is a router? Routers guide and direct network traffic both locally. They can even be larger, and then they connect you to the internet. And now we have switches. Switches connect devices within the network to forward the data to and from these devices. So if you don't have Wi-Fi, it's like the Ethernet cables I talked about. That connect you to the land and then you can plug it in here. Now, DNS was a DNS, that was a domain name system that turns the domain names into IP addresses, as we talked about earlier. And then the firewall, this is now we're getting into the security side of things. This firewall is gonna treat, it's gonna monitor the incoming traffic going into your router to make sure there isn't any malicious data getting through or in or out. Now we have the network interface card, as we were talking about earlier. So it actually allows a computer device to be connected to the Ethernet. If this chip wasn't installed on the computer, then where would you plug your Ethernet cable at? And then as you can see here, so first we have here the switch, and then these are your plug all your devices in. Then we have here example of the domain name system. It goes out through here, turns it well, it comes from here. And you have all your IPs and it turns it into SP text that you can just search up in the web browser. And then here's your network interface card. You find these on many computers. And then you can see here there's a slot for the Ethernet cable. And here you go. This is a nice little diagram, just basically simply showing how the firewall works. And then over here is a malicious source trying to get in, but it's blocked by the firewall. Now, now I'll hand it off to Israel to talk about the TCP and IP protocol suite. We talked about earlier about protocol suite, which is a set of protocols, something called the TCP IP suite, which is probably the majority of what internet runs on. It's a suite of protocols. So instead of having seven layers, it has four layers. And this diagram shows how it interconnects. So the application presentation and second layer, which shows the API, how the data loads, the description, so forth, and data session will be converted into one layer, the application layer. Transport layer will stay the same as well as it. Network is called internet, and then you have the data link, which is the, the switches running the link, and the third will be combined into one as well. But I'm going to cover briefly, but that's something you should know about as well. And then now for the demo, we'll show you some command line stuff that you can look at your network. Let me make sure my screen. Online prompt. Will this be on like the, the slides and everything, or will this be on this point? Yeah, the, the commands are on the slides. I just want to go back to make sure I follow. Them. And the whole slide presentation mm -hmm. pulls it out. Let me see. Let me run the NS lookup and then. There we go. All right, so we're talking about the DNS server earlier. We want to resolve a domain name to a IP address, and I'll show you how it's done. So there's a command, this is for Windows. Um, Mac will be slightly, might be slightly different or Linux. Command called NS lookup, which will look up the domain name and convert it into 
and return the IP address. So let's do google.com. As you can see, it returns, it tells you which server it was and the address, which should turn to here, but then it tells you the google.com, the address, which is, you see the, it's a, it's a very small, full screen. All right. All right. And it returns the IP address 142.250.80.78. That's what our IP address looks like. And now what we're going to do is you're going to ping that server. So the other command is called ping, which sends a few packets to the server. So you can test to see if that server or computer is active and is in, and then everything is set up properly. So to do that, we type in ping and then we can type in the IP address. As you can see, we're pinging the system and we're getting replies. As you can see, and so we have four replies. Each one, each pack was 32 bytes and three milliseconds took to send. And then four packets were sent, four packets was received, and zero was lost. So that's how we know we have a good connection from our computer to the server. And the next one was a man called IP config, which will give you the configuration information of how you connect to the network. As we'll see, I have a bunch of different ones because I have virtual machines, but let's go to the the Wi-Fi right here, as you'll see, the wireless LAN. We learned about LAN. Let me highlight it so it's easier to see. Wireless LAN, look at your network, adapter Wi-Fi. So I'm using right now my Wi-Fi adapter. And right now here is, we have the IP address. So yeah. right now we're using the IPv4 version four. There's also version six, but that's still breaking into the networking domain. It's for the, Major, obviously, majority of the internet is IP, IPv4. I see that's my IP address. And as a thing called default gateway, which just means the router that you router we're using, which is 10.106.64.1. And if you want to see more information, you can type ipconfig slash all, which will give you a lot more information. Which I'm not going to go all of them, but the data can provide you a lot more information. One more command we want to run is called route and then print which will give you the routing table. So we're talking about routing information. It gives you all the different, because when you when you make a request to a server or any other computer, it will uh, resolve those things you need to resolve to active the computer and then we'll store in a routing table. So that way it doesn't have to do it again. And right here we see all the information. That was all for the demo. Keep it short. And now for network security. So with network security, uh, one of the methods you're probably most familiar with is VPN. It's also known as a virtual private network. It's a way to transfer data securely over the internet. For example, if you are at a Starbucks or something, anybody who, any uh, hacker that knows their way around systems will be able to, might be able to intercept some of your data information. So it's used to camouflage, it's used to camouflage at your location. I mean, I think it's also it sends the local network and across geographical borders of the country of the county. And in terms of the Starbucks scenario, it encrypts the data, so it tunnels through the through the public network. So that way, anybody else who tries to intercept anything won't, won't be able to read it. Brian, do you want to show the diagram? Oh, yeah, sure. So yeah, so this is the VPN and how it can be used to, for uh, international businesses. So. You see, these businesses are in remote locations. And before, like, say, without the VPN, you wouldn't be able to connect secu as securely to the main network, or you wouldn't be able to transfer files as fast. But now, what they do is they actually use the internet to their advantage before it, an unsecure place where you can um, transfer data and packets and then where people can intercept it pretty easily. Now, you can actually disguise your IP using the VPN. And then, once you go over here to the switch, it's basically as if you're connected in the LAN. And then now speeds are even faster and more secure than before. So that allows people to work from remote locations and it doesn't have to require everyone to work in headquarters, which is pretty cool. Next is firewalls. So we all know about firewalls. There's essentially three different types. There's a packet filtering firewall, which works at the layer three of the OSI model, which is at the router level. 
which it takes a packet, it uh, looks at the looks at the data, looks at the source and destination IP address, looks at the port number, and it compares it to an access control list, which is the very important security principle to know is access control list, which defines rules of what can go through your networks. And based on that, those those rules and based on the packet information and and IP address port will decide whether to let the packet through. Next one is circuit level gateway, which operates at the level four, which is the session session layer. It pretty much it doesn't look at anything else. It looks at the session ID and the packet header and determines that traffic has a valid session. And if it doesn't have a valid session, it'll drop the packet. And this one, this one is really important because it can help mitigate denial of service attack. So we were talking about TCP earlier, and you make a connection with the server, the TCP connection, which is a Connect to the community server, it will do a thing called a three-way handshake. It will send a packet, a SIM pack, a SIM packet, a packet with a SIM flag, which will tell them to synchronize, and the server will respond with the synchronize and acknowledge, and then the computer responds again with an acknowledge flag. So those that three-way handshake and you establish a session. So a hacker might do is just do this thing called SIM flood, SIM flooding, which means it drops the, it keeps sending those requests, so it overloads the system, and uh, and then the system and handle all the requests. So this way it drops the packet and helps mitigate the denial of service attack. Third one is application level firewall, which we're most familiar with is, which it just takes the, all, the, all the packets, it reconstructs it and then analyzes the document and compares it to, again, access control list and decides whether to keep it or drop it. And then some of the common vulnerabilities is DDoS or DOS, where we talk about denial of service or DDoS, which is distributed denial of service. The difference is DDoS distributed denial service uses a botnet or, or a whole network of compromised computers. And we said earlier what it does is it just flood a system with a bunch of requests um, until it can't handle it anymore. And then another vulnerability is malware. It's a uh, software designed to harm and uh, prevent malware by keeping software operating some updated, using antivirus and patching systems, meaning like when you get that notification to update your system, Updated. I know recently iOS provided an update because there's some security uh, concerns for them. And some of the common networking Q and A's. I'll pass it off to Brian. Okay. So now that we learned about a bunch of information, how are they going to quiz us when we take, say, a network plus or other types of certifications? So now we're going to look at how these questions are asked in a multiple choice format. So the first question is, and don't worry if you don't know this, it's just for testing purposes, but so which of the following transfer layer protocols is used to support electronic mail? And then does anyone think they know the answer or have a shot at or want to guess? IP. IP, I think IP. Anyone agree with her? Yeah, I'll say SMTP. Okay. Anyone disagree? Uh -huh. What's that? So the answer is actually C, it's TCP. So email uses SMTP as an application layer protocol, but the SMTP uses a TCP as a transport layer protocol. So it's just like, um, you gotta look at the question and look at what's asking. It can be very tricky, especially when it comes to the specifics. So the acronym SMTP stands for simple mail transfer protocol, and then TCP is transverse control protocol. Yeah. We love acronyms and networking and cybersecurity. Then here, this question asks about firewall. So now we have a layer four firewall, and he, he can even tell you a little bit about it. A device that can look at all protocol headers up to the transfer layer cannot. And then we have A, B, C, D. I'll give you guys a second to read all the choices. So layer four, we're talking about the circuit level gateway, which focuses on sessions. Does anyone, does anyone think they know I have an answer or want to take a crack at it? How do you think? Yes. Stop incoming traffic bus. Anyone agree with him? Or think something slightly different? What do you think, Omar? I think it's either the first one or the last one. <laughs> first one or the last one. <laughs> All right, let's see. So the, actually, so the answer is, yeah, A. So you're half, I'll give you half credit since you said both. So the answer is A, HTTP is an application layer protocol since 
firewalls at layer four, it cannot block HTTP data. And HTTP is hypertext transfer protocol, which we'll know is about the web pages. And then now we have a lengthy question. These questions can be quite annoying and quite long, just how it is. You just gotta make sure you taste yourselves in these tests. And they're mostly like terms and definitions. So even though it may seem daunting at first, it can be way simpler. So here we have, in the network of LANs connected by bridges, packets are sent from one LAN to another through intermediate bridges. Since more than one path may exist between two LANs, packets may have to be routed through multiple bridges. Why is, it? Why is the spanning tree algorithm used for bridge routing? So the answer is B. The main idea for using spanning trees is to avoid loops. And last, they actually ask a lot command line questions too. So here we have a Linux command line utility for displaying intermediate points, routers, the IPP4 packets, it's passed through on its way to another network void is known as, and we have MBT stat, trace root, and that's that trace root. And then for B, for, for the answer, it'd be trace root. MVT stat displays current TCP and IP connections instead. Tracer is using Microsoft Windows environments, so that is not valid at all. And then tra and then NetStat shows all network connections on an employee. Yeah, okay. the first one is one of the tests earlier, which said you just shows different paths. It's like when we came earlier to server, it was a bunch of different routers. So net um trace route is simply going to tell you. All the IP addresses of the of the routers are going through. Okay, so now we talked about all those questions and how they're asked. Let's look at what the general certifications are for networking. So here we have CompTIA network, which is uh, vendor neutral and the most common one across all these. And then we have more specific, but still um, good for overall vendor uh, neutral standards. We have Cisco Certified Network Associate. Now we also have this new program that's coming out in April, 2023, which is Cisco Certified Support Technician CCST. So to start off with the CompTIA Network Plus, this is the most common people go for it. It's um, kind of like a beginner cert if you wanna get it before your Security Plus. And this is a really good foundational network cert that proves the employer that you know uh, base knowledge or like base models to intermediate level of networking. And then the cost for this is around 358. And then with these certifications, they usually have a lasting period of three years. You can actually enroll in renewal programs or take or retake the exam. And then with these renewal programs, um, it's pretty, it's way easier than taking the exam because you can just attend like some lectures or seminar, just answers questions. And what is network plus for the student discount for academic partners who come to you and go down to like 100 or something? The exam and we're also working right now on lines having the doctors being covered like doctors and courses to stay tuned for now yeah and these are nice to get to like kind of hr filter too especially when you're applying to intro roles not many people go in with certifications and they don't have any experience as you don't as well but these certifications can help you stand out and then next we're on to the cisco certified network associate this is a more of a high level cert that um is more specific towards cisco and goes more deep into concepts than uh, the Network Plus. For what I research, a lot of people take both the Cisco Certified Network Associate and the CompTIA Network Plus. And what people do, they actually study for the first, the first test that they study for is the Cisco Certified Network Associate. And then from there, they actually, with no study prep in between, they just go straight on to the Network Plus. And they say it's a pretty easy transition. Although when people try to do the reverse and go from Network Plus to Cisco Certified, it can be quite difficult, especially when the commands can change and like the interface is different because now you're in a different environment. It's like going from Windows to like Mac, if you want to think about it like that. And then over here, it's kind of like the same standards. Uh, for cost, it's around $300 and the same thing expires after three years, but this one also has renewal programs and you can also retake the exam to recertify. For these renewal programs, they're usually around 30 continuing credits for both, which is not that bad. And you can knock out, you see when you get higher level certs, they're way higher. 
And then for both of the exams, they're both one exam and they require no prerequisites, which is nice. The only caveat is, is that this, the Cisco certified networks is just 30 minutes longer than the network plus because it just covers way more material. And then now we're on to the Cisco certified support technician. So this is mainly for the people who are really new into the IT field and, and have an interest in networking, but really don't know where to start or just want to get their feet wet and don't want to spend like six months studying for the Cisco certified networks associate for their first certification. And with this, they're actually going to release a learning program in April 2023 that's free on their Cisco learning site that you can use to take the courses. So it's kind of like an online self-paced, like online course, which is pretty cool. And then for this, it only costs $125. And then when you, once you earn the certification, it, you have it for a lifetime. So if you want to think about this, this is like a precursor to the Network Associate and the Network Plus. If you want to think about it in CompTIA standards, this is like the A plus, but more specialized in networking. And then for this um, certification, it's only one exam, no prerequisites again, and it's only 50 minutes. And then at the bottom of each, I mean, we're gonna send out the slides to you guys so you guys can see what concepts are covered there. And lastly, for a couple of announcements, Leandro will take you. Yeah, thanks, um, Israel and um, Brian, for the slides and all the information you guys provided today. In terms of club announcements, we have three important announcements. Uh, our, so our next event is going to be on March Monday, March 13th, and that's going to be our full stack uh, React event. So in this, we'll have oh, the, mo the meeting will mostly consist of a demo. So we'll be talking about a little bit about React and implementing and connecting a database database to React. So it's going to be coding based. So if that's something you're interested in, then we definitely recommend this event. Um, I'm still deciding if I want to use um, Mongo as a backend or MySQL in terms of which is easier for students to pick up. So um, well, we'll know during the event, but so that's our first update. Our second update is you guys have probably heard that we mentioned that we have a hackathon this that we're planning this semester um, and we're going to make an announcement regarding that which involves more details in terms of what campuses are participating uh, what sort of sponsors we have what sort of projects you guys can um, do uh, stuff like that and that announcement we're going to put out on Wednesday uh, via email via discord um, and we'll be posting a bunch of flyers around campus as well for our third announcement um, we also have a couple of um, CSS club roles that we have open. We have the web developer. If you guys are interested in coding and helping us bring new features to the club website, um, we have a role for that. We also have a role for a data analyst in terms of um, providing better events to you guys, looking over the data, like who, um, how many students show up to our events, stuff like that. And we also have a journalist and a photographer role. If you guys are interested in taking photos for the club or um, writing articles relating to technology or just stuff relating to the club. So all the links for that are on the slides and we'll also send it via our email. Um, but again, our John Day Hackathon announcement, be sure you guys are on the lookout um, as we're gonna be sending that out on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, and I know Israel and Brian provided more resources for this. And all of this is gonna be in the slides and in an announcement in a leak of email that we sent um, via our emailing list. Uh, but yeah, again, we apologize for the delay we had at the beginning. We switched to a new room, so we were just getting everything set up. But uh, um, again, shout out to Israel and Brian for this great event and all the slides. Um, anything else? Yeah, I just want to add in for if you want to get to cybersecurity, I would highly suggest going through all the networking concepts. I know some of them can get really boring very quickly. But with cybersecurity, you want to make sure you have a good understanding of network concepts. I went through cybersecurity interviews all the rounds, and some other candidates were much more qualified than me in terms of hands-on projects. When we came to asking like really technical networking cybersecurity principles on networking, they weren't able to answer that out, but I was, which got me the offer. And I'm telling you, understanding networking concepts and security will go a long way, even if no experience. Uh, again, I have no expectations either. Just put that out there. So good. Uh, when it comes to applying cybersecurity as well, you want to apply as much as you can. You need, I got a bunch of rejections, but once I got that shot, I was able to talk 
I expect somebody I was able to demonstrate my knowledge in it, which helped me get rolled around. So as I went to you guys, again, if you want to get cybersecurity course, I would suggest you take earlier on a be divided course in computer networking, which is CSCI 379. Because I know John Jay is mostly focused on programming first and then I will decide to figure it later. This computer networking, the only prerequisite I think is the uh, 72, which is object oriented programming. So talk to you advisor, of course, I try to get that as early on as possible. So when it comes to internships, you'll have that knowledge. Um, and just to add on, like, so if you want to um, maybe get a head start or you want to, like, you're thinking, so what do I learn networking? So these resources are really good. Starting off with the first one, it's actually the Cisco um, learning platform where you can find a bunch of courses that like introductions like beginner networking and they talk about different protocols and again to depth. And then NetCAD is also like a learning platform. All these resources are free. They're just different learning platforms because some content kind of differs here and there and the delivery could be different. So I just wanted to provide a lot just in case you guys can have like this and then see what's out there. And also Professor Messer is a really good resource if you want to look into getting um, any content IA search. He has a really nice free video series in which he's goes over uh, certain concepts and he and if you want like you can purchase like um course materials or testing quizzes he releases and then there at the bottom i have dan's courses that's going to be more if you want to go the cisco certified route he um has a whole like prep playlist on youtube and getting certified for that course then down at the bottom where you see the resources invented those are actually env network environment software that you can download for free and then the skills for all is kind of like an elementary and it's a um, pretty basic like networking environment. It kind of like holds your hand throughout all of it. But if you really want to start fresh and get the groundwork in, you can try GNS3. And that's a nice uh, environment to work on to kind of get some hands-on experience if you want to do it yourself. Hey, everyone. Yep, we appreciate you guys coming here. Um, we have the room until 2.55, so we're just going to be hanging out. If you guys just, just want to go. Pizza. Food, food if you have questions, network will be here. And thank you to everyone on Zoom. Or we'll be seeing you. Um, we'll be wrapping up in a minute. Yeah, and then the slides will be posted like tomorrow, the latest. What's the room of love on? The one with us? The room of bonus, the room of the bowling club, or the dance club. <laughs> <We're the dance laughs> <club. laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, like, um, did you guys like download the slides beforehand? No, no, I don't know slides. All uh, right, because I tried adding some memes. I guess it didn't like uh, transfer through. I don't know if it updated, but like, that's the memory version. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Because I did it like this morning where I like I changed some images for no reason. I put Gandalf on a computer. <laughs> it's like you should not pass. Actually, yeah, now that's another thing. There's so many slides. So I was making sure we got the, everything on time. <laughs> Yeah, some good memes from the office guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good show. We'll try to have more next time. Yeah, it's always a one at me, especially some stuff is getting boring. So I'm like, I gotta have some comedy. Yeah. Like, seeing that agenda on the, <laughs> the projectors, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I gotta make the words bigger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. Peace out. Yeah, 
phone caller. Oh, uh, general figuring out the script. Oh, yeah. So I use, um, I was going to do it like by hand. I was like, bam, just like a lot of work. And I forgot, I remembered about Power Automate. Like it's a Microsoft program that does scripts for you. So you don't have to code it yourself, which is so nice. And they're not working? Yeah, yeah. I did, <laughs> so I did so many test runs. And I was testing with Denora's, Annie, and Israel's. And I was also sending it to myself. And I sent like 20 emails because like I forgot to end the script. So I just got looping. <laughs> Uh, it was just like basically like a lot of back and forth. But what I did is um, I made it like I got it goes row by row, and then it looks for the the headers company, and then it, it like fills it in with the template. Like I just place each company as a variable, the name as a variable, and um, the email as a variable. Oh, okay. And yeah, I just loop it, and it goes row by row. So I want to use the club Gmail though, because if I can get it on the cloud, that would be sweet. Were you able to get in? Not not again. I mean, we tried the code, but like um, Annie never got it. So I thought she was gonna be here and then we'll we'll try it, but I guess she couldn't make it. Because what I guess I realize it's on Google Sheets too. Power automate is um The next meeting is March fifteenth. March sixteenth. So, speaking as someone who has no computer science experience, yeah, I was interested in getting a certification. What would you suggest the first certification they get would be like? You guys have. So it depends, like what area you want to go into. Like, do you know, like, what type of role you're looking for in the future? Like, network engineer, penetration tester, security analyst? I uh, something in the realm of cybersecurity. It doesn't matter for the school of IT, but that was actually good. Yeah, I would say um, what a lot of people do is, like, if you're really new, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it, like, getting the A-plus to get a foundational knowledge. What I recommend is studying for the A-plus, but not actually taking the exam, because then you get the foundational knowledge. and it's not really like, even though it's a cert, like it's not really looked at and it's not really an HR filter. So it doesn't provide much value, but the knowledge provides a lot of value. So if you want kind of like a guide to go into, like I would like start studying for that. But security plus is like the first yeah. cert you'll want but to get. Start studying for, like studying don't get the A plus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just yeah. You a good yeah. yeah. That. Cause that's like um, basically like the A plus, what it um, corresponds to in job roles, it's like help desk. Yeah, like um yeah, security yeah. analyst like level one roles right, like okay. yeah know, and then um have you heard of try hack me or hack the bots uh, okay if you go on those those two websites are like the most famous yeah. cyber security because they provide learning platforms so you can use for free and then they teach you like all the way from the basics and like what i do too um hack the box has like a mini university and all I do, I get a student discount since you, all you have to do is second your email. And you pay $8 a month and you get um, access to a lot of modules that bring you from like beginner all the way to like a junior predecessor or bug bounty. Yeah. Yeah, hack the box and try hacking. Like I have a philosophy class in computer science. Oh, just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you like, like so the, the most so like easiest and annoying question that on the service really simple. What do you yeah, try hacking can be uh, more friendly, yeah. friendly like, um, but you want to make sure you get to hack the box university instead of the regular one. Because um, one's like, there's like two different ones. One's like, learning platform, I had and like a, a platform where you can like, practice, we'll get blog events. So do that in like an hour. Thank you. Yeah, and then, oh yeah, of course. And then the resources here, that's like, like how and like five I and E starter pass. That's also free for um students too. And then I was like, going to a bunch of courses. Um, like starting out with like um, just interesting hours. Hours. So, I, 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 
Cybersecurity. Cool. We saw like the, who's like the yeah, and, uh, Denora, some uh, Raymond. Okay. On the dark skin. Yeah, there's a lot of dark skin. And, I mean, and there's only one dark skin guy in our team. The black guy, not given. I don't know if it's a student even though I'm reading. You would always say, like, like cross next level, level. Oh. How do you How do you I think the other day. Really, I told one of my classmates and tell him that, uh, like, 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 I wouldn't. Like, yeah, yeah, that was an accident. Because, like, turns out I've had a lot of sleep. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you have, yeah, like, short term. How did you do I see. I see. And then I do say, I don't know. You just forget, man. I don't know. I was so bad. That was so bad. That was so bad. And Jennifer, what have you? Yeah, your your clock is the wrong time. Nah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, what time are you put on your phone, right? What? what time yeah, are you put on your phone? You, you probably thought you were early. I didn't. I didn't allow nothing goes up for the plan. Yeah, so. I got it. I was like, I was like, yeah, I mean, he was like 45. So he like tried to, I don't know. Well, bad. That's not bad. I don't know. He probably has 10. Damn, bro. This guy got put those past. I mean, funny. I, I don't know how, like, like how are class um, sign ups decided? Like, when the sign ups open for like a semester, because like I was trying to sign up for a while. I think by whoever has the most credits. Oh, yeah, by most credits? Yeah, I don't think so. I'm not 100% sure. Because I have like, like a, a lot, lot of credits. credits I think I'm going to work for this. Yeah. So I'm always like, have the yeah, ability to select one of the free like black like middle. Yeah. Select one of the students who pick class. Wow. Okay. Yes. <laughs> We're pretty much the students who are already ahead. The first div, they were like crap. Yes. No. I had I had what I uh, I, do, yeah. I, I just wish I majored in CS. Yeah, yeah. 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 what? You you I know. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I could have had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one? Which one do you think? Uh, the teacher. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Ah, the one. You gotta take the A. Or uh, the A master. No, I like to take the B. Oh. Uh, yeah. I like master. Yeah, nah, nah. I used to start with B with the lazy. Exactly. Oh my god. And then what? Like there was one time I had my like, I look, it's not there. Like no two shirts are running. Yeah, I have to find a way up there. Yeah, yeah for sure. after a while, I'm sorry. Like, this semester, I think it's like kind of like that. Nah, I got home. Uh, that's good. Uh,